yeah, hello everybody and thank you for watching this tutorial. What I'm going to show you is how you can use the Mocha Tracker and the Mocha Import Script to do some corner pinning. The only thing that you really have to take care of is that you don't, by accident, destroy your image. Hello, this is Matthias for marmoworld.com and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. Today we are going to look at the third step where we create the effect in which I detach the image from the wall. In particular I will show you two interesting techniques. The first is the usage of my script Tracker to Mask that, in combination with Mocha Import, also allows you to move After Effects masks according to Mocha tracks. The second thing we are going to do is to use the reshape effect to distort the image when I detach it from the wall. That's it for the summary, so let's get started. Ok, so welcome back to the second part of this tutorial and uh, now you can see I hope have already opened here uh, the project from the last time where the corner pin in the first part is already done and now the only part that is missing is the third one where I here destroy the image. Okay, And for this I have already prepared a, a background texture so I drag it in here and put it on front, in front of the other ones and also to clean up a little bit I'm going to make these two layers of the first two tracks shy layers and hide them so we don't need it for this part anymore. Okay now I place this layer roughly where it should be and then I duplicate my plate and put it in front of the texture. And now we cut a hole into this duplicate. This is the main idea of it. So can just roughly draw a mask here where the wall should be visible afterwards, like this. And then with M I reveal the mask properties and go to subtract. And then I'm going to add some effects to this layer, namely the roughen edges effect I already have. So you can search here in the effects by typing something and roughen edges is already selected. So I drag it onto this plate and if I hide this here you, you see already a little bit what is happening. So the edge of this mask basically gets roughened yeah, before, after, before after you can see here's the difference and the next thing I'm going to apply is a drop shadow. So now you can see that there is a hole nicely cut into the wall with just these two effects. I think the rough and edges effect will look a little bit nicer if we set it here to spiky so it's a little bit rougher and um, so what remains to do is basically to do the normal corner pin and then to make sure that um, here the, uh, the picture frame hides the background before it uh, show uh, such that it gets visible behind the picture frame. So first let's shorten this duplicate of the plate here and let's really name this plate with a hole. Okay, and now we take the original plate here without the hole and duplicate it a second time and call this corner pin 3. And you will, or you all probably already guessed right what we want to do with it. So we want to corner pin. So we load the tracking data in Mocha again. This time we select the tracking data for the third part. And everything is correct. And here I'm going to choose again the warp keep frame option. You can do it also again without warp as I've shown in the previous part. And 
I again draw here a mask on the layer before I corner pin it. Uh, maybe like this. I just solo the layer to see and disable here the mask visibility. <sighs> Telephone, I'm sorry, I'll be right back. Okay, so back to work. Um, so, ah, right, corner pin. Um, so I hit MM to feather the mask. Now I can see how much I can feather it such that the image stays entirely unfeathered, but the border of it has a nice feather. And next thing I can do is to apply this regine warp again with the keep current frame option. So apply. Now we have a nice corner pin here. Whoops. And as you noticed, I forgot to enable the freeze frame. We can also do this <coughs> afterwards. So just right click, go to time and um, freeze frame here on the first frame. And now you can see that it nicely moves. The only thing that is not yet that nice is that here part of the picture frame gets already um, is uh, disappears or too too soon. So what we can do about this is that we again duplicate our plate, shorten it to the appropriate length here, and put it above our um, texture. And now what we do is actually going back to this first frame here, drawing a mask around it. Like this. And now we go to another script which is called tracker to mask or uh, actually the first thing we do is that we with this layer selected choose another option of mocker import, namely four AE track points from corner pin points, which does the following. It just, if I hit apply, it generates on this layer um, track points. So you can see here now I have a motion tracker with mocha corner pin track for track points. And these track points are basically now the same as usual After Effects track points and you can use them with my script tracker to mask. So what does tracker to mask do? It moves masks according to track points. And this is exactly what, what we want to have here. Namely, we want to move this mask here with our track points. And so what I do therefore is I select this yellow mask. You can see here currently it just stays fixed. Yeah? And I select these four track points. And now I go to tracker to mask and hit this button here that says forward. So from the current point on to, to, to the right here in the timeline, move my mask that I've selected according to the track points that I've selected. So just click here. Oh, and it complains that, so tracker to mask operations are always limited to the work area. So make sure that your part here that you want to work on is contained in your current work area. And now we hit here. Now it computes for a short while. And what we now have is our mask nicely moving with, with uh, the track. So now I can see this looks now much better. Here it's still not, not perfect, so I guess it can be a little bit better by feathering this mask a little. Maybe like this. But uh, anyway, don't. it doesn't need to be too precise because it will be very fast, so it, it will not really be noticeable, so not, not such a big problem. The last thing that needs to be done then finally is that we have some kind of distortion here when the image gets removed. Okay, so when it detaches from, from the background. And for this, we need to work on the corner pin layer, which contributes to the inside of, um, 
yeah this this part and we need to to distort it and how do we do that well first of all we again need some masks on this layer the first mask we need should exactly have here the shape of the inner part so of the image inside the picture frame like this and we call this mask outer mask and then we have an inner mask that can be of some kind of elliptic shape here like this so we can move it in in the middle of the picture maybe like this and we call this one inner static because this will on will not move and then we duplicate it and call this one here inner moving so we again want the inner and outer mask here uh, to be to to be moving and we again can do this with tracker to mask so here we already have our motion tracker it doesn't matter that it lives on a on a different layer you can just select here the four corner pinpoints and the outer and inner moving mask um, we just hit here again the forward button wait some time until it's finished and now we can see that here the outer and inner masks are now nicely moving with the picture frame. You can see here some distortion. You can get this a little bit better if you play around here with the interpolation. Uh, actually also use nearest would have been working in this case, I guess. Um, but this, this doesn't matter for our purpose. So the next thing we do is we shut up here. We set all these masks here to none. Turn all of these off so that they don't have any influence on the picture anymore. And what we actually need them for is for an effect, namely for the reshape effect. Reshape effect. Add here our reshape effect. And now this actually needs three masks and exactly these masks we've created here right now. So the first one that we need is the inner moving mat mask. Then the inner static mask and finally the outer mask and what we can now do is basically we move from the moving mask here or we warp our image from this moving mask to the, to the static one and what is moved well everything inside of this rectangle here yeah you can see if i go here with percentage higher that the mask moves towards, the image moves towards this, this upper mask or everything that was here in the, is in the lower mask travels towards this upper mask. Yeah? So in this way you can dis distort, distort your image. And okay, we want to animate this distortion. So at the beginning we want to have a distortion of 100%. And if you leave it like this, you can see it looks here if I scroll further as if it would have been glued here together that it stays there okay but we just want to have this like maybe until here so we set here another keyframe so with EE e, I reveal the effects go to the reshape effect and set here a keyframe for the percentage and let's zoom in here a little bit So here then we want to have zero, so like this. And maybe we have try here to let it wobble a little bit after. So here I go to 20% and here again to zero. So let's just see how this looks like. Whoops. Yep. This is exactly how I want it to be. Okay, so this was the second part of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I am Matthias for marmoworld.com and have a nice day.